Marion, and I'm a technology consultant at the Gallia Benton ESC. I am a Google Educators Level 1 and 2, a Google Certified Trainer, and a Remote edX Instructional Technology Coach. Today, I will show you how to use Canva to find, edit, and customize free educational templates. Um, I'll also show you how to use features of Canva to elevate your designs. Um, so over on the right, um, today's to-dos, we'll learn Canva basics, we'll learn to share and present, we'll look at some advanced features and talk about some ideas for use. Um, the session's recorded and the recorded session and the slides can be found in the remote edX Google Classroom um, with the join code um, that's presented. If you are watching this recording um, and you want to follow along, you will need um, a Canva account um, at canva.com. If you do have questions, put them in the chat. Erin um, is co-hosting, and so she will either stop me to answer or maybe she could answer them herself. So what is Canva? Canva is a web-based graphic design tool um, that lets educators and students create images, slides, video, and more. So even if you um, are not creative or have very little design experience, there's lots of templates for you to browse. You can edit, you can share with students, and you can share with other, other educators. Um, the best feature about Canva is that it is free for K-12 educators. So there are different types of accounts in Canva. Canva. There is a free Canva account um, that you can use just if you, even if you're not an educator and it's enough to get you started. However, I highly encourage you to sign up for the free educational account um, and there's even um, a district option. So if it's something that a lot of people in your, in your school or your district are going to use, um, there is a link um, in the slideshow that will show you how to get the free educational account and also how to get your district to sign up. Um, there's also a pro account um, and it does cost money, but I will let you in on a little secret. Um, the educational account has more uh, content that you will probably ever use. Um, so I would definitely try that free educational account before I would sign up for the pro account. So before we get started, let's see what you already know. So in the chat, if you don't care to place a number, um, one, if you are already using Canva and you love it, two, if you just think it's okay, three, if you don't know enough about it, and then four, I'm brand new and I have never used Canva before. So go ahead and put that in the chat and we'll kind of get a check of where everyone is at. Well, it looks like we're all over the board. Um, so we will definitely just start with the basics um, and that's fine. <clears throat> and the basics that we're going to look at today are uh, Canva tools, the templates, images, text, backgrounds, and sharing. So let me go ahead and split my screen for you so that we can open up Canva. <clears throat> All right, this is the homepage for Canva. So this is canva.com. And the best way to start with Canva is to start with a template. So templates allow you to create a design very quickly, even if you don't have that design experience. They're fully customizable and you can search. Canva has made it very easy for you to search multiple places. So you can search in the very top um, search box. So you may know that you already want um, to start with a flyer. So you can search for flyers and it will give you all kinds of flyers. You can also on the home page use the icons under the search, the canvas search box. Um, if you know that you want to do a presentation, it will narrow that down. Um, over here um, on the left hand sidebar, there are templates and you can search those. So I like to search, start with a template just because that gets you acclimated with the tools um, and you don't have to be so creative for your first design. So the template will just allow you to 
um, take somebody else's design and then put your own content in it. And when you're looking at templates, let's go ahead and go back to uh, searching. And I'm gonna search for some flashcards to start our presentation today. So if I were wanting to do some flashcards, to create some flashcards, and I type in flashcards in the search box, I get so many flashcards, it's probably overwhelming. You can narrow your search. You may say, I want them to be pastel. You may have over here on the left, it might be a theme. You might be an elementary teacher. You might have a particular color. So lots of ways to filter out, um, narrow down the type of flashcard that you want to, des to design. Another thing for you to look at when you are searching is when you hover over some of these, for instance, this one, when I hover over this, there's a little icon at the bottom and it says um, it's for a pro subscriber to get this template for free. Pro means it's paid for. However, if you have the education account, all of these that are labeled pro are free to you. You can use anything here, okay? So you would choose a, a template that you wanted to work with. And I already have one um, selected for today. So I have chose the animal, these are alphabet animal flashcards. Um, and once you choose your template, you would just click on it and then it would open up this canvas. So this is what you would see when you would choose your first template. Um, one of the things that I like to do is I'd like to hide this area right here. So this is all of the content, but when you're working, sometimes that takes up more space than what you'd like. So I click this little arrow right here and just hide that. Now let's look at our template. So this template is alphabet animal flashcards. It's got multiple pages to it. Um, and so you've got arrows at the top. You can move down, move up. You can duplicate pages. You can put pages in the trash and you can add blank pages. This is gonna be sufficient for what I wanna to design today. So let's just take a look at what we can do to this template. Well, over on the left-hand side are all of the design elements that make up your design. So these are called tabs. We have a template tab, we have an elements tab, um, text, images, photos, all of the content for Canva can be found through this editor side panel. My panel, if you're following along on the video, my panel may look different from yours just simply because um, the, the extra tabs at the bottom, Canva moves to the top that you've used them recently. So if yours looks different, that's okay. So the first thing I probably would wanna do here would be um, change out these images. This is, a, this is a flashcard set for somebody else. It may work well for them. But we've talked about different animals in my classroom this week. So I want to change out the images. And you can change out the images through Canvas Library. That's the easiest way. So under the Elements tab, I am going to search for a beetle today. So we've been talking about beetle, beetles. So when I search for a beetle, I get all kinds of different types um, of content. So I get photos, I get graphics, I get videos, I get audio, and you can scroll down through here and you can see um, I have all types. Well, these are photographs in my template and I want to stick with photographs. So I can come up here and just say, let's limit this just to photos. And now I have mostly, this one's not a photo, I have mostly photographs. So when I choose one, um, I also want you to notice, do you notice there's a little icon next to some of these? These are in here purposefully for the educational account. So that's what the little graduation cap means, that they're, they're there because you signed up for the educational account. So when I choose a photograph, there's two ways to put it in my template. The first way is if I just click on that photograph. And what happens there is it just adds that photograph to your template and then you can size it, you can move it. However, for this template, I just want to replace this ape with my beetle. So I'm going to delete this beetle and I'm going to just hit my delete key on my keyboard. And this time, instead of just clicking on the beetle, I'm going to click and drag him across and kind of hover over the ape picture until it snaps into that frame, okay? Another um, 
feature that you have um, with Canva, it does give you some basic editing tools for your picture. So if I have a picture selected um, up, up at the top, there's an edit image button, which um, I will get into a little bit farther on. You can also crop pictures. You can also flip your pictures horizontally or vertical. So basic editing tools um, that you're probably familiar with. You can also upload images. So maybe you have an original image, original photo, photo that you wanna to add to your design. So to upload something of your own, you're going to pick the third tab down, which is called uploads, and you can upload media. I happen to have a ladybug on my desktop. So I'm going to upload, it shows you a progress bar. And when that progress bar is finished, that becomes part of your library. So then you can go ahead and drag that ladybug over until it snaps into the second frame, okay? Now, when I look at this ladybug, I'm like, oh, I wish that would have been more centered. You can double click on an image and just grab a hold of it and move it where you want into that frame. So let's look at text. So I've changed the ape and I've changed the bear to um, different insects. So your text button, your text tab looks like the T, gives you some default text boxes. These are all editable just like other text is. They're all changeable. It also gives you some predefined um, font combinations and some fancy or kind of word art looking work text. Um, I don't need to add any text, but if I did, I would just click on it and it would put the text box in my design. My text on this template just happens to already be there. And so all I want to do is change it. So I'll just double click on the word eight and I can type in the word beetle. If I chose, I could come up here and change the font. I could change the size, the color, all normal text tools that you would have um, that you should be accustomed to, you know, even using like Google products or Microsoft Word products. They all look the same. So let's go ahead and change bear to ladybug. Okay, so let's move on and look at our backgrounds. So I have slide, my first slide, page one, and it just looks a little plain to me in the background. So you have um, the, the ability to change the background of this page. There is a background tab in the editor side panel. And my options are, they can they give me a few colors. Um, they also give me some pictures, but right here's a little color palette. So I didn't like any of the colors that they provided. So I can come to this plus sign and add a new color. And I decided I wanted somewhere in the green area. So I could have moved my slider down here. And when you pick up that color picker, if you notice, um, my page one, it's changing that background color as I go. Um, it's like kind of like a live preview. So I like that because I, I can see which one I think might look better. So I picked a color and then I can click out of that. So now I have um, a background color. Um, I also have, um, if you look at this, I also have different topics like you have landscapes and patterns and gradients. And all of these are set up the same where you can say, I want to see all of them or I can scroll through some of them. So if we look at see all of the gradients, for example, you have lots of gradients to choose from. So I might decide I wanna change this to a green gradient instead. And all I have to do is click on it and it updates that background. I also, might decide that I think grass would look good behind there. So I could go to some of the textures, I could scroll through, but I can also just search. So I'm going to search for grass and select one that I like and click on it and it will update my background. So that's how you can change your backgrounds. <clears throat> on this slide, if you are watching from home or if you decide um, that you want to download the slideshow, um, there is a support button in the lower um, right-hand corner of some of the slides. And that was just put there um, in case you needed a little extra help, but they are linked to um, Canvas help pages. So that's going to just give you a little bit more help if you need it. 
we've already done the image as a background. So if you are watching the video recording right now, this would be a good place for you to pause and create a design from a template. Um, does anybody live have any questions? Erin, do you have questions from anybody in the chat? No, they all seem to be doing okay. good so far. All right. So if you're watching live, just okay. remember, um, you'll have access to the video and the slides for reference. So we will move on. Well, we actually, ooh, yeah, we actually do have a question. It says, how do you apply for your teacher account? I, if you have the slideshow, um, there is a link in the slideshow when I, when I first talked about the teacher account. Um, it takes you to the page where you can sign up for your teacher account and it just asks you for your school. Um, it's a little bit different than when I started. Um, when I started, I had to have a letterhead that I had to submit to say, um, but other teachers have signed up lately and you don't have to have that anymore. So there is a link. Um, you can probably even just Google Canva for um, education, educator account, and I'm, I'm sure that it will take you close to where you need to be. All right, so we finished our Canva basics. We're a fourth of the way through. Um, so let's talk about basic sharing. So there are all kinds of ways that you can share. You can share with an individual, you can download, um, you can share to your Google Drive, you can post to Google Classroom, you can share by presenting, which is what I'm doing now. I created um, this slideshow in Canva and you are seeing the presentation. And then Canva has their own classroom that we'll talk about. So all of the sharing options, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this a little bit. All of the sharing options are under the share button, which is in the upper right hand. So if I wanted to share this with an individual, I would just in this box, add that person's email. And so Katie Kilgore is a colleague of mine. So maybe it's Katie that I want to share with. Then I can also give Katie permissions. I can click on the down arrow. Do I want Katie to edit? Do I want her to comment? Or do I just want her to view? Well, that's up to you. Why are you sharing this with her? Um, and then you can add a message. And then when I hit send, Katie will get an email notification that I have shared this with her and it will provide her with a little clip of what the, of what the design looks like. Um, and then she can accept that. She can also under share, you can copy the link, which is right here. Um, if you copy the link, the link goes to your clipboard and then you could paste that in an email message. I personally think that's not as clean looking. Um, as actually sharing and letting Canva send the email, but that's just a personal preference. The next way that you can share um, is by downloading. So maybe it's something that you want to print um, and pass out. So under the share button, you have a download option. And when I click the arrow, here are the choices that I have. So Canva will always give you a suggestion. So if the design template that you picked lends itself to being an image, then it will tell you, um, I suggest you download it as a PNG. A JPG is also an image. If it's something like a worksheet, you may wanna change that to a PDF. And down at the bottom, if you've added video or audio and it's, it's multimedia, if you download as one of the first four, that multimedia won't show up. Um, so if you have got any kind of media in there that's video or audio, then you might wanna change it to an MP4 video or an animated GIF. So I can leave this as a ping for right now. Down here is an important piece of this. It says for you to select the pages. Do you want all five of the pages of this template? Or maybe you only did one. So you could just check mark what you want to download. I like to download one page at a time and I will tell you why. If I selected all five pages and I downloaded, um, it would zip them. So it would be an, a zip file and it would be another extra step. And I feel like if I'm just going to take the extra step, I usually just go ahead and download mine one at a time. But that's also a preference. So that's how you can share by downloading. Um, 
The next way to share is if you've created in Canva, but you want to like a presentation, today's presentation. I created in Canva, but I wanted to be able to share the slides with each of you. So I added it to my Google Drive. So Google Drive is under share and it's under the very last option where it says more. And I have to scroll down to find it. And when I click on Google Drive, you may the first time have to log into your drive, but I've been there before and it shows all of my folders and I could choose exactly in my Google Drive where I would like that to be. Now here's one caution on sharing to your drive. Um, I shared this to my drive so that I could share with um, participants today. Um, at currently, they're only allowing the presentation to be 10 slides. Um, so my presentation is close to 50. So it would only let me share the first 10. And it did have a little message that says they were working on that. <clears throat> okay, you can also post to Classroom. So under the share button again, Google Classroom is near the top. So maybe I just want my students to see this so I can post it to Google Classroom, Classroom by clicking Google Classroom. My Google Classroom opens, and once again, I've already logged in, but you may have to log in. Then I can choose my class, and then I can choose my, my actions. So these are the same things that you see in Google Classroom. You can make it an assignment, you can make it an announcement, or it could just be a material. Um, and again, on this slide, if you need more help with that, there is a support button, um, but that's how you would post to your Google Classroom. You can also share this as a template. So under share and more. And when I go through these, there are tons of ways to share. Um, I chose template because I, I had seen a really good idea about sharing your template. So to share as a template, or to template, you would just click on this template option and then you would just publish that template. So let me show you a really cool idea about um, sharing as a template. So I have this newsletter um, that I created. I took parts of the newsletter and you can see right here, it's got a little lock on it. So I took parts of this newsletter and I locked them so nobody else could edit them but me. And then I shared this in Google Classroom and I assigned each student their own copy. So each student now can add their own student share section, what I've learned this week, they have the capability of adding that part in. And then this is the newsletter that will go home with them. So it's personalized to them and their parents will see what they learned this week and they'll see what um, their students wanted to tell them. So I thought that was a really cool idea for um, sharing as a template. And lastly, you can present in Canva. So there are tons of presentations. Um, I have a history presentation that um, I pulled out. And whenever you have a, a, a presentation, there will be an extra button at the top next to share that says present. Um, and if you click the down arrow, you will see that you've got options for presenting. So standard presenting, you advance just like you would a PowerPoint. Um, or a Google slide, you can set it for automatic play. You can set it as a presenter so that you can see your notes. And then you can also record as you present. Um, so if I just chose the standard way, then um, that would take over my screen and you can see um, that you can present this slideshow. So that's just another way that you can share. Um, there are some advanced uh, presentation features um, that are pretty cool, and I will show you some later. But one of the things I like about um, Canva presentation is you can see that I have a really neat mouse. So the mouse pointer uh, matches my theme. So that's one of the um, neat features about using Canva for presentation, and I'll show you a few more in just a few minutes. Okay, another way to share is by creating a class in Canva. So it's not necessarily um, 
posting to Google Classroom, but you might not have a Google Classroom. So maybe um, it's a group of teachers and you just want to, to work with in Canva. You can create a class in Canva and share designs with people and make assignments for people within Canva. Um, it's a little bit um, timely to set that up. So if you're interested in something like that, you definitely wanna click the support button at the bottom. Um, and, and get the steps for setting up a, a Canva classroom. All right, we are back to questions. So um, again, this would be a good time to pause the video and practice. Um, do we have any questions from um, our live participants? Um, somebody asked, did you share your presentation in the chat? I did, but I can sure put it in there again. It was at the top. Let me do that. Okay, there you go. All right, so um, we have now on our to-do list checked off basic Canva basics and sharing and presenting. So we are ready to look at how you can elevate your design with advanced features. Um, and these are gonna be starting out with some graphic design features. So this is where you can start from scratch. So once you've got some of the basics down and you feel comfortable using Canva, then you can start from scratch. And so if you look at the homepage for Canva, they also give you a couple of places um, that you can start from scratch. So up here at the top next to uh, my account information, it says create a design. And down here is a little plus custom. You could go there. Um, in the banner area, this to me looks like a little cropping tool, um, but when I hover it over it, it says custom size. So if I click there, I can just decide what size I want my um, custom design to be. Well, I have already made one recently that was this, um, the size of a landscape um, sheet of paper. So I'm just going to use that. And it just automatically gives me a canvas to work on. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the other templates so that you can see my screen. And even if you aren't very good at picking out um, color palettes and putting fonts together, Canva provides you with a tab that can help and it's called Styles. So if you look at Styles, you've got color pal palettes and you've got font sets. So if I click on See All, it gives me all kinds of options to choose from. So this one looks springy to me, so I'm going to choose it. And then I can go back and if I want to, I can also then pick out a font set that they've already decided look good together. So I can pick out a font set and it gives me all of the default fonts um, and what they're going to look like. So I can either take those and change them. I can highlight them or select them and hit delete. I can move them, I can size them. I can use the font tools at the top. So it's just like adding text yourself, except that they've already chosen um, font pairings that go well together. And then we can look at some of the advanced image um, options to make your design pop a little bit more. So if I have an image, if I go to elements and I'm searching for, since that looks kind of springy, I'm gonna search for a tulip. Um, and I wanna photograph, I think. And so I'm choosing um, maybe this one. And notice that when I clicked on it, it went into uh, my canvas. I can rotate that. I think I'll just rotate that, maybe put it towards the bottom. I don't like that white at the top, so I can crop it. So all these basic tools um, that hopefully you're already familiar with. So now I've got um, an image in my design that I've created, but I don't like this white background at all. And so Canva has a background remover, so you can take a picture um, similar to this family and remove the background. So whenever I click on this tulip picture, I'm going to go up to the top to edit image and the background remover is, is the very first option. So I can click on that and give it just a little bit of time. 
and it will remove the background and make it transparent. So now it looks like, it just looks a lot cleaner to me. Um, and I can also, um, in the background remover, it already did that once, there are some buttons right here after it removes the background. Maybe it erased uh, more than you wanted so you can restore parts of that image, um, or maybe it didn't erase enough. So you have some editing tools um, with that background remover. And then I can also take that image um, and I can apply filters to it. So again, um, under the edit image option, the menu that pops up, you've got all kinds of filters. So maybe you want the picture to be like mine over here in black and white. Um, it does let you see all of them. Um, and then as you go down through here, there's some other um, editing tools that um, you can use. So maybe you want your picture to have a shadow. So if you look at my example, I put a, I put a drop shadow on this picture so that down at the bottom, you've got a little bit of a drop. There's all kinds of frames that you can use. So if you scroll down through all of those frames, you can add a frame to your picture. Um, and then clear down at the bottom, um, there's just some fun filters. So um, this one that I chose in the presentation is called Pixelate, but there's all kinds of fun filters for you to just play with. And sometimes I just like to play them and play with them. And if you if you put on a filter that you don't like, you can always hit your undo button um, or you can hit control Z on your keyboard. And that's the same as uh, keyboard shortcut for undo. So lots of fun filters that you can look at. You can also add an image to a shape. And so this is called frames. So when I go up to my elements tab, I'm gonna get rid of this tulip for now. Um, and I type in the word frames. You can see that a whole group of frames come up that have the same background in, in them with the clouds and the grass. And so what you can do is you can add a frame to your design. And then if I go back and I, I search for tulips again, and I find a picture of tulips that I like, um, maybe this one, for example, when I click and drag that over into my frame, it automatically takes the, um, takes the shape of that frame. And once again, if I'm not happy with where that's placed, I can click on it, double click on it, and then just move it. So you can um, add an image to a frame that you have chosen. You can also add, um, Bitmojis, GIFs, there's a whole lot more from Canva to ask to access more content. So I'm going to switch back to my animals for just a minute um, and show you a couple of these. So maybe I want to replace the cat picture, but I want it to be a Bitmoji. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom and this is just more Canva content and I'm going to choose Bitmoji. And then I'm going to type in the word cat in the search box. So you can see that it gives me some options. So I can take one of these Bitmojis and bring it over and that will serve um, as my image. I can also use um, Giphy and Giphy is just animated GIFs. Um, I had already searched for a dog because that's next. Um, and so I can just pick one of these and drag it over. And then my dog becomes one of the GIFs. So those are just kind of fun. There's a whole, a whole lot more down in here. Um, and even if you click at the very bottom more, you can add content from your um, Dropbox. You can add content from Facebook. You can add content from Google Drive. So maybe you have pictures in your drive you want to use. You can click on Drive. And if you've signed in, um, it will show you your drive folders. And then you can pick from there. So that's a neat way to just um, add a lot more content. Um, there's also um, under more, there's a character builder. So it allows you to build a little character similar to the one I built here. Um, so something to explore when you have more time. We also have some advanced media options. Um, and so each one of the media options has um, its own tab. So if I scroll back up, 
um, here's the audio that you can add. And they have audio songs for background. They have audio um, clips like a balloon pop. I might search for a buzzing bee because I want to add that to my tulips. I guess that was just buzzing, buzzing bee. Um, keep in mind if you add, let's go back to our tulips. If you add a video, um, the video or the audio is not going to play unless you're in presentation mode. So maybe we did want to add um, a cloud video. When I look at my videos, um, it tells me how many seconds right here the video is. Um, and I can just drag it over. So maybe I could have added my, my tulips to that. Um, but any of these videos, and they are in categories, or you can use your search box, you can also record yourself. I can't demonstrate that um, at the moment because my camera is busy with the Zoom. Um, so that was adding a video. You can also add the audio the same way. So here is your audio tab. And then we can move on to advanced presentation options. So if you've chosen a presentation, um, there's a few advanced options that you can use. So let's go um, to the history um, presentation that I used before. I can change the background of this to be a video if I chose to. So I could go to my videos. Um, I don't know what I would put there, maybe an ocean. And honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see. I'll make that a little bit smaller. You'll be able to see it. So you could choose any of these videos and you just want to kind of hover and you see where it changes to the background. So you can make a video background, but that video is only going to play while you're in presentation mode. So it wouldn't be something that you could you could put on a presentation and then print it, in other words. Um, also for your um, presentations, you have page animations and text animations. So in other words, how your pages come in um, and how your text can come in. And these are very similar to animations that you might use in PowerPoint or Google Slides. And then this one is kind of a fun one. So I want you to look at the screen, if you will, because it will disappear when I demonstrate. So these are fun effects that you can use while presenting in Canva. So if you look at these, these are keyboard shortcuts that you would type while you were presenting. So if I typed any number between one and nine, I'm going to get a timer. Um, B is for um, blur, and then there's confetti and bubbles and a drum roll and an emoji to be quiet and a microphone drop and a curtain call. So these are found while you're presenting. There's a little tiny keyboard um, at the bottom of your presentation. And you could click on those if you didn't know um, the shortcuts, but I, I can remember them at this point. So um, I don't have to do that. So if I were presenting um, our history slides, just in the standard way, oh, that just looks awful. Um, but I wanted to um, give my students a timer. I would just type the number one and a timer comes up in the corner. If I type the B on my keyboard, I can blur my screen just to get their attention. Um, if I type a C, I'll get a confetti cannon. The O is for bubbles. Um, a D gives a drum roll, so maybe something exciting is coming up. And then you need your students to be quiet. Or we have a microphone drop. And then we also have a curtain call. So you could end your presentation with the curtain call. And then you can also see right here um, that I have my timers expired. I could reset that um, or I could just close the timer. So those are called magic shortcuts and they're just adding a little fun element to your presentation. So we're two questions. Those are some advanced features to um, elevate your presentation. Um, anyone have any questions? Hey, Laura, I have actually have a question. I um, had not uh, previously connected my Bitmoji with my Canva. And when I went to go do that, it, um, it's not, it says to connect, but it's not it's like it brings up my Google like web page, but it doesn't give me any options. Any ideas for that? 
I didn't have any trouble with mine. Um, I do know that it has logged me out before and I've had to log back in. Okay. Um, are you using the right, the right Bitmoji? Like my Bitmoji is my personal account. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have it connected correctly, I think. But like I said, it's given me the connect button, but then when it brings up my Google Chrome page, it just is blank. There's nothing on there to do it. I, I can't go anywhere from that. So maybe I just need to restart my computer. That could be a possibility too. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We are getting close on time, but I do want to share some ideas with you. So as we pass through these ideas, um, if you'd like, please put any, any ideas you have in the chat because that just helps others. And my ideas may be um, limited. Um, I know that Leslie had said we may have some secretaries um, in, in our group today, and I forgot to ask that in the beginning, but lots of ideas for secretaries. You know, you can make your lunch menu, you could do flyers, um, just informational um, pieces. So um, any ideas that you have as we um, go through, um, please just put them in the chat because I, you know, I might not, I might not have come up with something that the rest of you could come up with. Um, and the rest of these slides are all just ideas and they're all set up the same. I've given you an example and at the top, I tell you what you would need to search for, or you could click the link in the slideshow and it takes you directly to. So for example, this is Google Classroom Forms and Headers. Um, but if I would click on the on the on the link, it takes me directly to. I already have that, so let me just. It takes me directly to all of the options, and if you can't find something in here that works for you, <laughs> there are there's just so much, and so you would just check, you would just click on one, and then you could start editing that template, um, editing your colors, editing the the text, changing out the images, um, so. Templates are just a great way to start. So that's Google Classroom um, Forms and Headers. There's also Classroom Decor. So if I clicked on the template link for Classroom, it's up here at the top. If I clicked on that, I would get all kinds of camp, uh, Classroom Decor. And I went ahead and said, I decided I wanted my decor to be camping. So if you want to narrow or filter, you can always use um, the plus sign and then just add words um, to your search box. So that would give me camping classroom decor. And then um, I have lesson plans. So you would click on the templates right here. It would take you straight to lesson plans. They have monthly, they have daily. And I'm not going to go through all of these with you um, as far as clicking on the template link. Um, there's comic strips, and when you look at comic strips, there are multiple pages. It gives you illustration sets, it gives you the text bubbles, it gives you the template. Um, your kids love to make com um, comic strips, so that might be a fun one. Um, storybook templates, this is a great way to tell an exciting story to kids. Kids can create their own. And if you watch the um, storybook over on the left, um, it shows you, it gives them all of the resources that they need. Um, it lets them customize the book to theirs. I only on the right customize the, the title page, um, but students can create um, their own stories. Um, and then I already shared with you the um, parent and school newsletter, but there is the link to the template. Um, and so, you know, you, you look, this is more of a high school template or middle school and this is elementary. So they have all levels for you. And then <clears throat> presentations. So all kinds of already pre-made that you can customize presentations, Flipgrid backdrops, graphic organizers. Um, they also have already created um, instructional videos and introductory clips. So just let me show you one of those. This is an instructional, instructional video um, that's already been created. And at the bottom, there's a preview and it tells you how many seconds each slide will appear. Um, so we're counting, we're using numbers. I, when I looked at this one, I thought, how cool would that be if you assigned this to your students and then they had to record themselves saying those numbers or spelling those numbers. Um, a great way to be a little bit more interactive. Um, there's also introductory clips. And so if I preview this one, so maybe you've created your own video in Screencastify, this would be a great way to make it a little bit more exciting as an introduction. 
Um, I think that you'll find in Canva there's, there's just a little bit um, of anything that you would want to design. Um, so with that being said, do you have any questions or does anybody want to share any ideas? Laurel, there was a question about using the Google Maps feature. Have you used that? I have not used the maps, um, but that would be, is it in the, under the more? Yeah, Google Maps. Let's go back to, um, we can go back to the tulips and let's get rid of that and let's see what the map looks like. So I'm just gonna put in Ohio. We'll see what comes up. Maybe I'll just narrow that a little bit. My ESC is in Rio Grande, Ohio. That's a little better. So I think it might just be just a graphic. I don't know if it's interactive or not, but I could find that out. Any other questions? All right, so we finished our to-do list and we just have a few other things. I do want you to be aware that there's a Canva mobile app. Um, it says you can create your designs anywhere. I do have this on my phone, but it's really hard for me to create on my phone. Um, I have been able to, like if I found um, an error um, in something that I created in Canva and I'm away from the office, I can't edit. Um, and if you're used to creating things on your phone, you may be better at that than I am. So if you don't have any final questions, um, this QR code also goes to the slide presentation and um, it should also be in the chat and it will be posted in the Google Classroom. Um, I do need for you to um, fill out this exit survey for me. I'm going to put that in the chat. So the exit survey is just to um, help decide what we want to do next. Um, and it will also be how you receive your certificate of attendance today. So if you are somebody who needs that certificate, you definitely want to fill out the form and it will just automatically email your certificate of attendance to you. You could also point your phone at the QR code on the screen. I'll give you just a second for that. And I am just about to my, to my hour. Um, so just a couple of final things. Thank you for attending today. I hope it was something that you found useful. Um, my email, if you have questions, is at the top. Um, the remote ed ed edX instructional te technology coaches all have Calendly links that you can sign up with any of us um, to receive one-on-one -on -one or small group coaching. Um, and if you'd like more information about that grant, there is a link for you to follow there. So thank you for coming. Um, and if you don't have any further questions, Erin, um, I think you could end the recording.